Today we are going to be talking about eosinophilic esophagitis. What is that? So that is the allergic disease that I have and it is also called EOE. So EOE, eosinophilic esophagitis, is update, which is the allergic disease that I have. Um, so I had an appointment with my GI doctor that is helping treat my condition and um, my eosinophil count actually went up. So two years ago I had a scope done. So for those of you who don't know what EOE is, it is an allergic disease. I'll put a description right here. And it is challenging to live with because you don't always identify the allergic reactions that you're having and it causes a lot of discomfort within your um, food pipe, your esophagus. So I had a scope done two years ago where I explained that I was diagnosed with EOE, which will be this video right here. And I had a scope done a couple, like about a month ago, it was around my birthday, and the recovery was really, really hard. Um, if you've ever had an endoscope done, it, it was really, really hard. Like every time after I would eat, like I'd feel the food go down, and then right here where the food was actually entering into my stomach, it would feel like I'm getting stabbed in that area. And anyone who knows that communicated with me in that time period where I was recovering from that, it was extremely, extremely challenging for me, and I was just in so much pain, and it took like a couple weeks for that to heal, but once that did, I was fine. So they take biopsies and they have to check your eosinophil count to check the inflammation with your esophagus to see how the disease is doing. Some things that I eat, it takes like a couple hours to feel inflammation. Some things I eat, it's right away. It just depends on what it is. It's really frustrating. I can't go out to eat because of it. Uh, my inflammation is up to it's 50 to 100, they said. So before, two years ago, whenever I got my first endoscope done, um, my inflammation was zero to 15 eosinophils um, in my esophagus, and now it's 50 to 100. So that is pretty high, according to everything that I talked about with my GI doctor. And he said that, because um, I was put on a PPI, but I can't really handle PPIs too much, and I don't like taking them, it's, it's not, it's completely everything against everything else that I've learned um, when I went to esthetician school. Um, my nurse or my, my teacher was a nurse practitioner and she knew a lot about the digestive system and I learned a lot about the body there and I just don't feel comfortable taking the PPI unless I absolutely have to. It also gives me terrible, terrible side effects. Um, I would be having, I can't talk, joint pain, um, confusion and like irritability. And um, so, yeah, so I, can't really take the PPI. So I was having terrible acid reflux and long story short, the treatment method that we're doing now is he said that he only wants to give me the steroid, which starts with a B, it's budesonide, I think, that comes in an inhaler form and also like a slurry to eat or to drink. Um, and you can't eat like an hour after, but it is a steroid, so he doesn't like putting people on it too, too often. And if you have EOE or if you know someone that has EOE and you, um, or experimenting with different things, let me know what you think about the information that my doctor told me so that we can have a conversation about it because I'm open to it. My doctor said that he doesn't want to end up doing scopes very often because there's no point. It's good to just diagnose it, but in order to keep the inflammation under control, like just go by how you're feeling. Like if you feel like you're going through a flare and like going through like a, a hard time with it, then then you're having a flare and you're going through a hard time with it. If you don't feel any symptoms, then, you know, just let it be. And I was like, well, isn't there a chance of long-term scarring? Like, I don't want this to lead to um, esophagus cancer or anything because I'm in a support group on Facebook and they said, like some of the articles that I read on there based on different research, like it leads to esophageal cancer and some that I've read said that they don't. And I will try to find those resources and link them down below. Let me know what your doctors have told you. Um, my doctor told me that there, it does not, I can't speak English, that it does not lead to esophageal cancer and there's no current findings of that. Um, I kind of have a hard time believing that because anytime there's inflammation in one area that is so long, it, it's like, what is cancer? Cancer is the death of a cell. So if there's horrible inflammation to, to one, part of the body. I don't know. I'm not going to get into the details of, of the anatomy behind that, but do get where I'm going with this. So anyways, I just didn't want to be put in a situation where like 10 years from now, like I have esophageal scarring or even five years from now or 10, 15 years from now, then I have esophageal cancer. So 
like I'm doing okay it's sometimes irritating it, depending on what I eat but honestly what makes mine worse I think is the pollen like my pollen allergies are so bad and that's another thing I'm getting immunotherapy which is um, allergy shots so I'm getting injected with the things that I'm allergic to and it's supposed to help with my oral allergy syndrome because I also have so many food allergies that cross react with my pollen allergies. So they're not clinical food grade allergies where they show up on paper, which I do have a ton of those. Also, that's a whole different a whole different one. So I also have it's oral allergy syndrome which is OAS. So my allergy shots are supposed to help with that. And then once that gets under control, hopefully I'll be able to start incorporating more spices and herbs into my diet, which I kind of already have been, which has been a blessing. Hallelujah. Um, but as far as EOE, my GI doctor told me that the allergy shots will not help my EOE. He said that it will not help treat EOE because he said eosinophilic esophagitis is a completely different disease than clinical food allergies, regular food allergies. He said it's a completely different disease. Um, there have been studies, he said, that were showing that the, the allergy shots don't help the um, eosinophil count in your esophagus and all the other stuff behind that that goes along with the disease. But um, I don't know, we don't, we don't really know and we'll, I guess it's just something that I have to figure out because you don't think about food until it becomes a problem for you. You don't think about these things that are blessings to you until it gets taken away from you. Like I, I didn't think about that until it started happening. And yes, I've been living this with this for a while now Yes, it's gotten worse, but yes, I still had to trust God with it. And it's something that I'm learning and, and developing through. So I want to share my experience and my journey with you guys to help you. If you're dealing with EOE or if you know someone that has EOE, and leave a comment down in the comment section below who you know that has EOE. And if this information is something that you've heard for the first time, or if you disagree and why. I love having conversation about it and ultimately just finding a journey to healing so yeah let's get started but like sometimes literally when I eat like it feels like it just feels like there's like a, a stuck like there it gets stuck in my throat so when I got my endoscope done I also got a dilation I wasn't aware that they were going to be doing the dilation in that procedure period um, they did it after before I got the procedure done, uh, they asked me what symptoms I was having and I told them that it's hard for me to swallow. I feel like sometimes food gets stuck in my throat, which it does. And again, depending on the day and the pollen and I think stress and like everything else, um, that has like a big a big part in the in the piece too, depending on what my body's reacting to and like how, how it copes with it. Um, so there's that. And my recovery, like I said, was like really, really rough for, for my scope. Um, so I'm kind of glad that I'm not going to be having to get too many more done. But I've also, in the Facebook groups that I'm in, the other people that I've talked to said that their doctors do scopes like every every couple months or every time they introduce a food or take a food out just to see like what the inflammation is, the eosinophils in the esophagus um, after they do like food elimination. But he said that it's it's so, so, so hard to identify like what exactly the triggers are, which I agree with because I am a very allergic person with all the allergic disorders that I live with. It's very, very challenging. Like I have oral allergy syndrome, also known as food pollen allergy syndrome. I have um, hay fever. I have um, food allergies and then I have EOE. So it's a challenge. Um, it's crazy, but, but I know that God is faithful and... Um, I know that I just have to trust him and and be consistent and and do my research and do my part in it, which is trying to eat healthy. Like if you have EOE, something that I completely suggest is taking the supplement Quiseratin. Quiseratin is a natural anti-inflammatory and anti-viral antihistamine. I'll link that down in the description below. Um, there's also vitamin C. What else? So I take that, that also helps with like allergic reactions and anytime my allergies are bad. I've been getting allergy shots for about a year now. So we'll see like how that helps. I'm not at the maintenance dose yet, but lately, ever since I've been getting them, like my arms swell up so big. Maybe next time I'll take you guys with me to my appointment. But you know, the best thing that you can practice while having EOE is a good microbiome, is a healthy diet, low sugar, low inflammatory diet, low histamine diet, because what is allergic reactions? It's histamine, right? 
So low histamine diet, a low stress lifestyle, exercise, just like the basic things that make up a normal healthy um, life, but definitely low sugar and then make sure like you get your vitamins and minerals checked and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so I'll keep you guys updated and if you have any questions, leave it down below. Who do you know? Who do you know that has EA or that is struggling with it? And then leave a comment down below and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!